Pula has A and B units. Um, a units uh, receive a preferred 5% uh, growth uh, from the base, and the base was the four deal that which we listed, and the four deal that which we listed, the A units was around 9.2, uh, and your B units listed at the base of uh, almost 11%, 10.8%. So what happens with the A's is that obviously that 9.3, if we bought at listing, grows at 5% for five years. And uh, B units uh, get the whatever income is left after that growth factor has been factored into the A's. In terms of proportion, we issue the same number of units, uh, but the difference is in the pricing. The A was priced about 60% higher than the, the B unit. So in terms of relative market caps, that's exactly where we listed as well, that your A's were around 60% and your B's were around 40% of your capitalization. Um, what it ensures is a, a, a fair amount of gearing on, on, the, on the B's because any, any growth above 5% uh, significantly benefits the B's. For example, if we were to grow at 6%, the B's would grow at 13%. Um, uh, around 11, sorry, 11 percent, and if we were to grow at 7 percent, uh, the the bees will grow at around 17, uh, 13 to 14 percent, depending on how the shares obviously traded in the interim and that sort of thing. But uh, the the A is preferred by your absolute return type uh, mandates uh, from a, from an asset management perspective. Uh, they basically buy the unit and sit on it because it gives them that sort of predefined growth uh, um, that, that, that's inherent in it. Whereas the B is more for the, for the property investor that's looking for the exciting growth and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So the reason why we went for an A and B unit structure was exactly that it was for us to increase the, the universe of investors that would come into our fund. Um, and I think uh, even non-property people would find the A quite attractive as almost a fixed income type instrument.